ride today, checking out some APRS. I'll put it on Wheelerville Road and a couple miles this way, there's a little intersection by a trailhead called Brewer's Corner. Oblation Trail parking lot comes out. It's supposed to be an APRS Digipeter over there. I can't hear it down in Rutland City where I live, so I ordered me a Digipeter for my home QTH. It looks like up here, actually hearing some stuff and getting some traffic, so. Of course, I have no cell signal up here between the mountains and the ridges, but uh, anyways, hopefully get back. We can find ourselves on the map and uh, see how well we're reporting and uh, where it's picked us up. Welcome to my channel. Hope you're having a great day. Today, we're going to take a look at the Microsat PLX, PLX, PL Digi. I can't remember what it's called. It's the least expensive one. Right now at this time, May 2022, there's a version for, well, with the cable, it's like 100 bucks. And then there's one device, big heatsink thing, 152 without any cable. So I bought the lesser one. Give this a try. If this works well, maybe then I could sell this off and buy the better one. Have an eye gate and other things. But what I can't find in documentation or research, so videos out there for this Microsoft stuff very limited videos well it does I gate at the same time where they can have it running everything at once or just you know it's one mode versus another mode versus another mode so anyways took about a week and a half from Poland so I don't think it's quite two weeks but anyways let's get the box open up and let's see what we're looking at okay so I got the box opened up I ordered the cable comes with the speaker mic the mic connector and a cigarette lighter plug I figured that was better than Turn a tap into my radio's power cable to splice into it. So this should just be a plug-and-play operation. Looks like the cable's well built. Looks like the cigarette lighter plug also has a spot for fuse in there, so that's good. Seems to be a quality components. Guess Digipeter there, so. Oh, the thing is tiny. Guess I could double tape it to the uh, top of a radio. The radio I mounted it for and bought this for is the ICOM 2100H. Any ICOM with a uh, A-pin, uh, it's not really a DIN, modular RJ45 connector. Looks like we got some paperwork in there. Here we go. Here's my receipt. Yeah, I got the PLX Digi. At the time of this video, it was... He's got it in Polish. Anyways, that and the cable, you can see, was like 95 bucks. Not bad. <laughs> it definitely uh, wraps it well. It's not going to get hurt in transit. You can definitely see that. So where is it? Under a mile of bubble wrap. There we go. That's it. That's the device. Well, there's a DIN connector on the front has got me, but you're going to program it via a USB cable. The mini USB is not included. Thankfully, I have one for a pocket PC. That's the cable. The DB9 is going to connect to the radio. Pretty good quality, hard plastic case, so. What is that? That's probably what? Four inches long, inch and three quarter wide, and maybe three quarters inch thick. So you lay those two things on top of a radio. Doesn't take up very much room. You can mount it in your attic, back room, as long as you got a coax access to outdoors somewhere. So, anyways, let me get this thing uh, hooked up to the programming. See if we get my information in there, and let's see if we can uh, program it up. And we'll try to videotape that process as well. Okay, I'm at the gentleman's website, it's Microsat. I'm a C R O S A T dot com, microsat dot com. I have this one right here, the PLX Digi. And we're going to scroll down. That's in Polish. Zolski. Zlotski. There you go. $70.12 American money at the time of this video. So you're going to download the configuration software installer. If you're going to update it, then you have to use. <laughs> the newer 
program when you open it up and do things. I'm just going to leave it hopefully at 1.04 installed. Uh, I don't want to mess around with any development software. This one says it's stable, so I want to stay with what's stable. So download what one you want, but it's going to come loaded with 1.4. So instruction in the manual, I did let download right here from this website. It says you need to use the one that the devices came with or is currently running. So in this case, 1.04. So we're going to open that up, and uh, let's see what happens here. Okay, so I got the program opened up. This is read config, write config, upload firmware, save to file, read from file. Got your radio. It says, say, Digipeter, beacons, weather, RTC time, telemetry reports, serial ports. What I need to do is get the radio, or, yeah, right, <laughs> the APRS device hooked up to the USB cable. It's supposed to self-load, self-recognize, and uh, let's see what happens. Okay. Got a terry cloth towel down since my desk is filthy. Got it hooked up. The computer beeped. And the red light's blinking. It says in the manual, if you want to download the manual and read it, that uh, indicates that the device is powered up. Red doesn't mean anything bad. I guess we Americans think that red is stopped or red is bad, red is a failure, but not in this case. Okay, so we're back to the little software device application on my desktop. Let's put read configuration firmware version 1.04. Yes, it is. What happens here? No call, latitude, longitude. Okay, I'm going to enter my call sign. I'm going to Google what my latitude, longitude is and see if we can write this back or I'll enter that information. And so give me a minute, put the camera down and uh, see if I can figure out what all that uh, latitude, longitude is. Okay, so I'm going to use my club's call sign, Rutland Amateur Radio Experimenter. <coughs> Excuse me, WW1VT. We're going to use the zero. Desk 7 is used for multiple portables, a bunch of different things you can look all that up. Digipeter, I got wide 1-1, I don't know what SP is, I forgot about that, I'm going to leave that alone. going to add wide 1-2, wide 2-1, I'm probably going to add a wide 2-2 if I can see around the camera <laughs> to do this. 2, oops that's 3. Let me pause the camera. I can't type on the keyboard and look at the camera at the same time. I guess I'm not talented enough. Okay, so on the DigiPeter part, I got wide 1-1. Don't know what SP is, but we'll leave it there. Wide 1-2. Wide 2-1. Wide 2-2. Wide 3-1. Make them all active. Then on the 1-1 and 2-1, it says traceable. That shows that it came from my DigiPeter WW1VT. So I guess the thing to do now is to write this to the device. Write configured. Latitude system error. Okay. Let me put the camera down so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, if you're like me, you just want to set things up. You want it to run. You don't want to have to decode this. I mean, this thing looks well built. They work quite well. I know a couple guys have them around the country that they've been on operation for years, but XXYY.ZZ where XX are degrees, YY are seconds, and ZZ are hundreds of seconds. D can be set for north or S for south. I have my latitude longitude. Let me show you. <laughs> Go to Google Maps. So that would be 4335.86, 7258.85, but it doesn't work. So I have 4325.86, 7258.85. Son of a beach. None of this makes any sense. And unfortunately, there's no good videos on YouTube about this, so that's why I'm trying to make this. 
Because if I'm running into this issue, nine times out of ten, maybe you will too. You know, I don't know what the hell is going on here. So I left the coordinates that they had set from the factory into it, and I overwrote my information. And then I added my beacon information, which I need to go back in and add. I'm going to save this to a file. <sighs> so let me add in some more wide area things, and I don't know. I don't know why that latitude, longitude has got to be such a pain in the arse. I'm going to have to send them an email about that. Okay, so I made those changes. We're going to hit the right config button. Right's pretty quick. See that little blue line go across the bottom? Oh, so we got the radio, Digipeter, beacon, weather. If you have a weather station, it'd be kind of cool. Telemetry, analog channels. You know, I wish the manual here was a little better written. I mean, he's probably trying to do the best he can, and it's very well written in English, but. You know, for Airbus Beacon's latitude is encoded as XSYYZZD. For XS degrees, yeah, 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 you did that. <laughs> and it didn't work. So it tells you Digipeter tab. Most things are 1 1, 2 2, 2 1. Everything up around here is 2 2, so. Anyways, the manual's. Uh, just wish it went into more explanation. I guess I'm one of those people that need lots of information to absorb it. So here in the United States, everything's going to use 144.390. Simplex, no tone, trouble. I can't read that over the back of the camera. Anyways, that's what you're going to set it up for operating frequency on your radio. I'm trying to look for the forwarding path at APRS.org. There's tons of information in here. Apparently I went by what I'm looking for because I'm trying to hold the camera. <laughs> Do this all at once. I want to try to find the forwarding system, how it uses the 2-1, 1-1, all that stuff to make sure I have what I need in there. Anyways, APRS.org. Okay, here on the APRS.org website it says, Using a new simplicity, Y2-2 works everywhere as an opportunity for education of new users. So, well, I have that configured. Let me get back to the little PLX Digi Peter configuration tab. So we have 2-2, 3-1, 2-1. 1-2 and 1-1. So hopefully we got anything that's going to be used. Oops. Hopefully we got everything that's going to be used covered. Nobody's going to be using any other messaging protocols. Okay, so I live in the Rutland, Vermont area. We zoom in right there. You got WK1ZK, that's Zach. He's the attorney for the state of Vermont. They got up here W1OKO-15, which is supposed to be another APRS Digipeter. But the thing is, get back out, only works <laughs> from a little bit this Killington Route 4 area over Wheelerville Road. It's a very small footprint. I think he meant it for the hikers up and down the Appalachian Long Trail that go right up and down this corridor. Part of that doesn't serve anybody in this valley or down here in the city. Zach K1ZK has got an APRS IS for Windows 32. He got a little computer running a eye gate, so I did that a few years back. And nobody seemed to use it. Uh, maybe an occasional traveler coming through, but we zoom back out. It's really not a whole lot of APRS traffic in Vermont. Way up here in Ripton, W1RMC has a Digipeter. It looks in fill in Digi. Click off of that. Let's move the map south. 
And up on top of Equinox, the one that's 45 miles for me, it's K1 EQX-7. So that's where I'm going to hopefully be able to fill in and point a beam or whatever I have to do to get my digi packets from this Rutland area up to Equinox. The only other digi Peter is over here. Yes, it's somewhere over here in Plattsburgh area. So when I come north of Brandon, if you're running high power, usually 15 watts more, you can make it way over here. So I'm not sure which one it is here in the New York side, the Digi Peets. But anyways, along the Lake Champlain corridor, Route 7, we see the mouse moving. It's not bad for Digi Peter cover coverage, which you get from Brandon. East Middlebury, Salisbury area, back down to Mount Tabor, right in this area, <laughs> well, maybe up in here, um, there's nothing, you know, yeah, so, anyways, hopefully my little Digi Peter APRS DLX Digi, PLX Digi, yeah, I think that's model number, works as a fill-in. Okay, so I got the cable hooked up to the APRS unit, but I want to look, show you this cable. I got it with the weather bites thing. I don't have a weather station yet, but I guess if I always could upgrade, I have it. Circle air plug. Little audio cable for the speaker. And the RJ45 cable. Not sure it's shielded, doesn't look shielded, but I haven't seen any negative complaints on the website or online researching this, so now I just need to uh, dig my ICOM 2100H out of the closet, find a power supply, circular plug for the said power supply, the power cable, some coax and antenna, and uh, we'll be up and running hopefully. So here you go, you see my DigiPeter up and running, it's reporting to APRS.FI. APRS Direct, unfortunately, isn't working, has issues, but anyways, looks like at this time there's also KZ1K as a DigiBeater up here in Roland. I don't know why he's doing that. Makes no sense. Apparently he doesn't want to use mine. He's friends with the guys in the Opposite Club, and there's, I just say, a lot of hatred between clubs here in the Rutland, Vermont area. Other club likes to delve into nonsense, frivolous, supercilious acts, rivalry, claiming they're the oldest club, we're the better club, most active club. I don't know. I, I have no nonsense for that. You know, I used to have a couple of friends in that club. They're all deceased, silent keys now. So, anyways, we'll just uh, end my comment there. But, anyways, come to Rutland, Vermont, WW1VT 15 is up and running. Okay, so it's kind of dark in here. There's my ICOM 2100H. The red light is the power source for the APRS PLX Digi. It's up and running. Got some coax here. It runs out the window to a half-wave dipole. And it just runs and runs and runs.